Any questions about what we've talked about last time? The review, the uh, the the review, the uh, dynamic memory allocation rule of three. Most importantly, initialization area that we talked about. We need that today. So, any questions on those? Suggestions? Objections? They're all good. Okay. So a quick look on, on what we have done last time was to do this. Oops, sorry. Put this over here. So, uh, completely blocks my view, so <laughs> at least I have an opening to see you guys. All right, so <clears throat> we talked about, uh, we, we created a string class. And in the string class, we created um, uh, operator overloading. We did rule of three. We went through all uh, the little stuff that we had. Uh, we discussed um, how uh, we can uh, um, overload the same uh, operator, the same function in a matter of saying, uh, uh, did I put this one over here? Why is it inside? That is not supposed to be in line. Um, my bad. Fix it. Yeah, same thing. Just yeah. So we mentioned that uh, uh, overloading is not only the arguments. But also uh, um, the method being constant, which means um, prevent, if we prevent a method to change the owner, that's part of the signature of the method too. So essentially anything that comes after the method, <clears throat> anything that comes the, after the name of the method, return type is not part of the signature. Okay? Anything that comes after is your signature. Um, that was one of the questions many of you in, in the walk in the uh, walkthroughs that many of you didn't get right. Uh, based on what is constant, different things are going to get called. Anyways, uh, what else do we have over here? Helper functions, um, insertion and extraction operator. Any questions now to this point of anything? No? No question? So get ready for this. We are going to get into almost two weeks of material in an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, Because everything is so tight together back to back that it just flows through it. So when I explain, if you get everything and we go through it and you don't have any problem with what I'm saying, then I can just flow through it and, and, and go through it. And, so let's talk about animals. My encapsulation of an animal is something, my encapsulation of an animal is something that has a name. So first of all, when we said encapsulation, it means your abstraction of what it is. So we have four things that make something object-oriented for us. It was uh, polymorphism that we know how it's done. We somehow, some features of it, like operator overloading. And inheritance we are about to learn, OK? And we have encapsulation that we know exactly what it is, which is putting the data and behavior together. So your encapsulation ab and abstraction is your view of the problem that you want to implement in your program. So the, uh, what I'm writing over here is absolute BS. I'm just imagining some type of a, uh, an abstraction of an animal, and we just go along with it so to learn what does it mean inheritance. So I would say an animal is something that has a name. It can act, move, and make a sound. Okay, that's what an animal is. Anything that can act, move, and make a sound to me is an animal. <laughs> okay, so, so, 
So that's an animal. And just for review, just to show you, like to start this thing, to be able to review the things that we had, I just added rule of three to it. it has, it, there is no need for rule of three in this class because there's no resources outside of its scope. It contains all the information that is the name of the thing. So why does it need? I put it over there just for you to see how things get created and destroyed and so on and so forth. So, you know, it has two queries for the name, one that uh, gets the name and the other one that sets the name. Okay? So the name query over here gets the name and the set query sets the name. So these are... I will call it setters and getters. All right, and if we look at the code of this thing, uh, I'll, I'll, and I created uh, an external uh, Boolean debug over here. Why did I put it over here? I think I put it in a, a thing last time, didn't I, in utils? I think I'll move it to utils, this debug thingy, because it's supposed to be. Oh, it is in, yeah, why is it here? Let me check. Yeah, it's not supposed to be there. Yeah. We don't need this over here because utils has it, right? So in utils, I have extern boolean debug that turns on a flag off and on that I have it in my utils. So in my utils uh, 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 file, I have a global, a file scope ut for utilities and a, a file scope debug flag that is off, and I make it global by adding these two externs over here. So essentially, anybody who includes the utils will have access to the flag debug and will have access to the uh, utilities that I have. Later on, in OP345, we're going to learn how to make this a singleton. Now, what a singleton is, a singleton is essentially um, uh, a class that can ha have only one instance. C out is a singleton. You cannot create another C out. C in is a singleton. Okay? You, you have one instance of iStream and that's it. You cannot create a second. Uh, we're going to learn how to do that in OOP 345. But yeah. But now, for now, I'm just making it available and I'm creating it so nobody needs to uh, instantiate the utils. All right. I can simulate it over here. I'll do it later, okay? So if we go through all these things, then I'm going to tell you what is a good way of doing the util thing. Anyway, so now in, I have a constructor, a structure, and all the good stuff over here. Let's take a look at the code and see what an animal looks like in implementation. So I'll, I have over here a constructor that gets the name of the animal, and because it has a default value, it acts like a default constructor too. No argument constructor too, because it has a default value. It simply sets the name of the animal using, using the setter name, and if the debug is on, it's gonna say creating name of the animal, the animal creating, I don't know, fluffy the animal, something like that, whatever you call the animal, right? And over here, it's going to say copying whatever the animal. And in here, it's going to say a setting whatever the animal. So this essentially uh, shows that. OK, so I'm going to say over here, copying the animal by So it shows a message for it. And the assignment shows that it's actually, if the debug is on, it shows setting the name to whatever. And uh, uh, this is the setter. Uh, this is the getter, returns the name. This is the setter, copies the name into to name, up to 40 characters. Act says act like animal. Uh, we can put the name over here too, like this act, but it's okay. Um, move like an animal and sound like an animal, okay? So, and when I am uh, removing, uh, when, I, when the destructor is called, it says removing something, something, the animal. Very easy and straightforward. Um, uh, I'm going to go to main and take a look at the main. So, now I'm going to 
uh, include utils over here first to be able to have access to that debug thingy. So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, not, I'm just not going to set the debugging to true and let it be false. So we have an animal fluffy over here. The fluffy axe moves and makes a sound. Then I'm going to show the animal using that function and return the animal. Very simple and straightforward. And at the end, that animal is going to die. Okay? So uh, initially, I'm going to do it like this, which means I'm going to receive a reference and return a reference like that. And when I run the program, three years later, when the program compiles and runs, what we see in main will actually get executed and run. Therefore, we're going to have, uh, let me put this thing at left so I can actually see what we have in here. So the program logs, runs like this. It's going to say, <clears throat> act like animal, move like animal, sound like animal, showing fluffy. It's showing the fluffy thingy, right? And program ends. But to see what happens behind the scene, to see how things are getting created, I turn the debug to on. And when I run the program, what happens is that now it shows it, it creates Fluffy the animal, acts like animal, moves like animal, sound like you're showing the animal, and removes Fluffy the animal. Are we OK with this? I have a constructor that's creating, and everything is beautiful and straightforward. Are we good? Just as a review to tell you why we have rule of three and why we like to pass stuff by reference, I'm going to remove this reference from here first. Which means now showing is returning the animal by value, correct? Am I receiving it? Line 18, um, I am calling the show animal, right? I'm not receiving anything, am I? No, it's like printf. What does printf return? Do you use printf all the time? Did you ever use the value it returns? <laughs> what does it return? No, no, that's printf. What does printf return? It returns the number of characters it prints on a screen. So if you print Fred and a new line, it's going to return five. It means I printed five characters. Whatever it prints on the screen, it returns. We never use it. It returns it. Same thing over here. It's returning the animal. I, I could have captured it in something, but I didn't, right? So completely useless thing. But when I run it, please take a look. This is what we have. This is the execution. What the? Yeah, so this is the execution, right? Now, if I run it again, look at the execution now. Whoops. It's copying Fluffy the animal by setting it to Fluffy, then removes the animal, then removes it again. What the heck happened? Why am I having extra stuff without doing anything in here? What happens is that we are returning the animal by value. When an object is returned by value, we told you that you cannot pass something from one scope to another. Compiler cannot do that because if it returns the x out by value, x is dead. It's in, the, in, in one value, right? Because of that, compiler says, if you are passing something from one scope to another, I have to copy it and send the copy out in case this one dies. Therefore, x is copied at line 18 into uh, at line 9 x is copied into a temporary nameless object, a copy of Fluffy at line 9, and it's returned to line 18. Nobody's grabbing it, right? Nobody's using it. So its use is done at line 18.5, which means right after 18 is done, it's, that nameless is not used, so it's immediately killed. And then it prints end of main, and says remove Fluffy the animal, that's the original one. Even worse, if I pass it by value, if I pass it by value, we know that this is how the function call happens, which essentially it, when it calls show animal, it sets animal x to a, correct? 
when it actually sets it to a, so line number 18, you see the comment in front of it? That's how a function is called. We talked about it at the beginning of the semester. A function is called by initializing the argument of a function to the value you are passing to it. Now, in this case, I'm not creating a reference. Therefore, x, x as constructor will be called using the value a, which is the object of the exact same type, therefore copy construct. So now if I run the thing, it gets even worse. Look at that. So what happens is that it says act like animal, sound like animal, and everything, and then it, that little function over there is, is, and that little function over there is called to, to show the animal. Well, before it, what it, it can show the animal, it has to copy the animal into x. And that's where the first copy is happening, right before showing the animal. Copying Fluffy the animal by setting it to Fluffy. Then, showing the animal happens, x is returned. First, x is copied to something so it can be returned into main. Then, the x is dead because the scope of it is over now. It's not a reference. It's a copy. First, that one is dead. Then, the one that is copied for returning is dead. So, Holy schmoly, how many things just happened? If I turn this off, if I turn the debugging off, this is what I see. This is one of those but it works moments that the student comes and I say, yeah, you wrote this, that this is not efficient, but it works. I know it works, but behind the scenes, so many things are happening that your program is 10 times slower than another person who wrote it without it. So remember, we always pass stuff by reference because of a reason. Now that you're warmed up, it had nothing to do with inheritance. It was just a review of rule of three, okay? Why we do rule of three? We do rule of three if copying happens. It happens safely. We don't need it over here. It didn't need it. We just put some functions over there to see what and when something is, is, is executed, and that's it. We just saw rule of three in action. Let's put it that way. OK, so now we have the animal thingy. Life is beautiful, and everything is done. Now, I want a cat. So the next example of animal is not going to have any copy constructor and copy assignment. I'm just going to have a destructor for it because it's needed. Uh, later on, I'll explain. But so the next example that you're going to see, the animal is not going to have a copy constructor or copy assignment because it's not needed. So now I want a cat. If you want a cat, obviously you know that cat, blank animal, what do you say? Is an animal. OK? <laughs> right? So cat is an animal. We know that for a fact. Because cat is an animal, I have my animal. I told you my animal doesn't have anything. It's just, it just oh, 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 there's something over there I have to remove. You didn't see that. Same thing at that one, but anyways, we'll, we'll, I'll come back and put it on, but I, 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 will just, I just want to say that's the animal without all the bells and whistles, right? We're good? Yeah, to this point. So I want to say cat, what is the difference between a cat and an animal? It has one extra property that an animal doesn't have. Number of lives. A cat has nine lives, right? Right? OK. If you don't know that, it does. Like, you kill it for eight times, it's still alive. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I don't know why they said that. Why they are saying cat has nine lives? Anybody knows? No? I don't know. A diehard <laughs> type of an animal. But anyways, so it has nine lives. So that's what I, I need to find a way not to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to use an animal's description and make an ad cat out of it. So I know a cat acts differently. I know the cat sounds differently, but I know a cat moves like an animal. So I don't want to do the move thing. I want to improve those things. So the cat completely acts differently. It has nothing to do with the acts of, of an animal. The cat makes a sound like an animal, but it adds a meow at the end. 
So I want to implement it that way. So I want to change my animal into a cat. To do that, this is the syntax for it. So I'm going to say, a cat is an animal, right? So class cat, one column. Public means is, OK? All right? Cat is animal. What the devil happened? It wasn't me. OK? So cat is an animal. And then you just write the additional things a cat has. Do I need to create a name for it? No, it comes with the animal. So a cat, if I did not have anything in here, obviously constructor is needed. But if I didn't have anything in here, if these are all gone, it was possible. It means a cat is just an animal with nine lives. And everything else remains the same, which means cat can act. You can actually create an instance of cat and say act. You see there's no method. Look at the animal. Animal has it. OK? And the same thing. You, so those things that I put over there, because I wanted to modify the things that the animal did in the cat. If you don't want to, just don't implement it. Okay, you can just inherit it like that. So now when I say cat is an animal and it has number of lives, the name I don't need to. So what, how do I set the name? When the cat is getting created, I'm gonna tell to the compiler, hey, when you are constructing the cat, construct the animal this way underneath. Right? It's gonna, I'm going to say BMW is a car that I don't need to tell that it has four wheels. I don't need to tell that it has a steering wheel. I don't need to tell that it has an accelerator or an engine. It's a car. It comes with a car. So when I say BMW is a car that, it means imagine a car. Now add or modify these features. Now I'm going to say Tesla is a car with an electric engine. So when I say something like that, you imagine a car, it comes everything, even the engine comes. We all know gas engines and other, so we think it's like that, but then they modify. No, change the engine to this now. Okay, so you can modify an already existing thing to something new and mold it to what you want. And that's exactly what we did over here. So in here, I'm gonna have, <clears throat> act, so. There is one important thing that you have to take a note of. All those people with markers, write it with uh, pen, write it down. People with uh, laptops, you're wasting your time, uh, but it's OK. Uh, so I, have, I, am, I am consistent in what I'm saying. Uh, I don't believe laptops do anything for learning. It's just a waste of time and distraction. Well, anyway, so what is the meaning of overloading? Let's use the microphone. What is the meaning of overloading? Um, overloading is to implement uh, something, uh, implement an operator. Uh, Not necessarily operator. Operator is a function. So essentially, it's, over, it's doing a fun creating a function. Continue. Uh, creating different methods for the same. Uh, so same essentially, uh, a function. Uh, overloading is creating a function with the same name and different arguments, right? Mm -hmm. Doing the same thing in a different way. Are we, are we okay with that? So that's what overloading is. Overloading essentially means, hey, I want to, uh, I have this function and I want to create another one. Now we have another name that is very close to over overloading that is called override. Override is not an overload. Override is a function with the exact same signature of the parent's function. Okay, Override is a function with the exact same signature of parents. So the act of cat in this case is exactly like act of the parent. Be okay with this? Which means when you create a cat, if you say act, that act of cat shadows the act of animal, which means act of animal won't be seen. The rule is that, this is a golden rule in inheritance, when you create an object with a an handle, when I say with a handle, it means create a cat in a cat's handle. You say cat A, that's cat in a cat handle. You say cat pointer P is equal to new cat, 
is a cat in a cat hand. You say cat reference A is set to B and B is a cat. A is still cat in a cat handle. So whatever the handle is, the closest function to that will be called by default. So if I refer to a cat as an animal, if I cast the cat to an animal, it forgets that it's the cat because now the handle is an animal. It's going to just call the things that animal has. But in general, in general, when you inherit in a normal way, sane way, proper way, when you create an instance out of another instance, always the function closer to the handle will be called. So in our case, when I create a cat and I have a cat variable, when I say cat, act, it's going to call the act that is closer to it, which is the act of the cat. But if I say cat, move, because there is no move, it looks to see if the parent can move or not. If it can, it says, OK, so move like your parent. You don't know how. My father was a teacher. This is a very bad analogy. I always mention that in my, in my uh, uh, class. I'm going to first, this time I'm going to first make the analogy, then I'm going to tell you it's bad. My father is a teacher, was a teacher. If it's a teacher, that's very scary because he's dead for a few years now. But what I'm saying is that my, well, he, and he used to teach mechanics, OK? And I teach computer science. So if it was inheritance, if you say, Fardad, teach, I would have taught computer science. If you say, Mr. Soleimanlu, teach, which means you're now referring with my father's reference, then I would have taught mechanics because I forget that there is a Fardad with skills of teaching computer science. You follow what I'm saying? So why is it a bad analogy now? This is a perfect thing to, to show what inheritance is. But the, the problem is that in an object-oriented thing, I'm not a child of my father. We are same instance of the object male human. OK? So my father and I, we are both same type of a, if you want to see how it thinks. So it's like and my, and me and my mother. My mother is an object of type female, uh, human female, right? My mother has a method called birth that returns a human. And that was me. <laughs> OK, that's the, that's, that's the correct design, object-oriented design for it. Got it? So that's why I say it's a bad analogy. If I say mammal, if I say human, yes, I am a human. I'm a male human. When I say, like, when I say it like I'm a human, that's perfectly good. All right? I inherit the, uh, the, 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 the capability to talk. That comes from a human. But if I go higher in mammals, then that's not the case anymore. A mammal can't talk. It might be what? A camel? It can't talk. I don't know. Maybe they talk, they talk, they talk their own way. We just don't know the language. But whatever it is. So you, you follow what I'm saying, right? So that's the hierarchy of inheritance. Classes inherit. Objects don't. That's a mistake that we have. We, have, we say, I inherit from my father. No, you don't. If you and your father are the object of the same uh, class, OK? That's why it was a bad analogy, but I had to explain how the things work, so forgive me. Because I've been criticized by saying, why you're saying that? Like, it's, that's not a right thing to say, but uh, sometimes you have to lie and say bad things and incorrect things to teach and then correct it afterwards. And that was one of them. And I immediately corrected it. Anyways, so now <clears throat> when I, so these, so act is overriding the, the animal's act. Sound is overriding the sound of the animal, and play is something that an animal doesn't even have. It's something that a cat has. You follow? So I can add features to a child that parent doesn't have. The thing is that now if I cast a cat to an animal, which, which I can, you can always call something with his family name. If I cat, act, cast a cat to an animal, and I say play, he won't say, what the heck you're talking about? I don't know what playing is. There is no playing. I don't know what the devil is a playing thing, Ricky. So going, looking at the code for this thing, this is how you create the constructor. And you use the initialization area to tell how the parent part of the object is supposed to get initialized. 
Okay? So if cat is defaulted, I want the animal to be uh, named to be Garfield. If you're old enough, you know what does it mean. If you're not, then anyway. So Garfield was a cat. It was an animation thingy a long time ago, the galaxy far, far away. Anyway, so 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 that's that. So the animal over there is so that when you create the cat, create the animal with name Garfield. That's what I'm requesting. At the bottom, when I'm having one argument, a two argument constructor, I'm saying when you get a cat, get the name and get the number of lives. Pass the name to the constructor of the parent. So whatever they want to call this thing, the parent is going to set it. And pass the number of lives to initialize the number of lives uh, attribute. And then I do other stuff. Are we OK with this? So anything that you want to do with the parent, you do in the initialization area. Are we okay with this? Then I want to create the act. The act has nothing to do with the act of the parent. It is something completely new. Therefore, I create a complete new function that has nothing to do with the, the animal. Move I didn't implement. So move is move of the animal. But when I make a sound, I want the sound of animal to be made, and then a meow comes out. OK? If that's the case, if that's what I want to do, then I have to somehow call the function of the animal, right? Remember, animal is not an object. It's part of me. Therefore, I have to use the name of the class. And like namespaces, I use scope resolution. There is no dot in here. So I have to say, first call the sound of my parent, then do this. So first it's going to say, uh, sound like an animal, and then it's going to say, yeah. OK? Yes? Mm -hmm. No, you, can, you should never do that. Do you have another human being in your belly? So when you want to talk, you say, human, talk. <laughs> you don't do that, right? You are the human. That's actually an amazing question. This is the mistake that people make. That's what, this is sometimes what people do. And it's, I think because they are coming from Java, I think Java does that. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. I wrote Java when I was 10 years old, so it was a long time ago. It was version one. Some people do this. That's a huge mistake. Can I call a constructor? Remember I screened, and you see the hair is not here. I did like that. <laughs> I said, do not call a constructor. We cannot call a constructor. That's the mistake. So in here, I am creating a cat, and I'm not telling how the animal part is created. Then at line 13, I'm creating a temporary nameless animal object which has nothing to do with the current cat. And that animal is going to die at line 13.5. So you cannot set the animal part that way. Okay. So to do that, you have to make sure you put it in the initialization area. That's, that's extremely important. Because when you put it over there, you are telling initial, initialize my animal part like this. You are not saying create an animal. Where if you put the constructor by itself, you are creating the animal. So um, another way of saying it, remember that we mentioned casting signature, casting syntax uh, has a, uh, is different in C++. In C++, when you wanted to cast in C++, in C++, when you wanted to cast, uh, say, an integer to a, do a double to an integer, you say A is double D, right? Correct? A is casted. Oh, sorry, integer. What are you doing for that? What are you doing for that? And it's amazing that people are actually nodding. OK. So I'm actually casting the double d into an integer and put it in a, right? That's how casting is. In c, we used to put it around the integer, right? 
Are we okay with this? So essentially what happens in C++, this is how casting is different in C++. At line 11, a temporary nameless integer is created out of the double and the assignment is done. And then that integer dies. So if you call a constructor, all you are doing, so if I actually, so what I mean is that if I actually write the code like this, I am casting that character string into an animal. I am not creating a new object. I am not calling anything. That Garfield is being casted to a temporary nameless animal, and then that animal dies immediately. Okay, back to business. And name is called and stuff like that. So usually, you cannot change the name of the person. Something, when you have something, they're named in birth. As soon as they come to being, you name them. And you don't change their names usually, right? I know, but don't go through that. Oh, I can go change my name in the city and go. And I, well, that's the thing. You, can, you cannot easily change the name. Let's go like that, okay? If that's the case, <clears throat> I want people not to be able to change the name. In here, I am calling uh, G is becoming Garfield, but I can go over here and say G dot name, and what do I put over here? Freddy. Okay. So now that G is changed, I can change the name of the object. I'm not supposed to in reality. So how can I make that name inaccessible? I can make it private, right? So I go to the parent, <clears throat> the place that name is, and I'm going to make that name thingy private. Oh. Yeek. Come on. Right? Problem is that now the cat won't be able to have access to setting the name. Cat should be able to set the name if needed, right? So, for example, I know it's a bad thing to do, but if I didn't want to initialize the animal, I wanted to be able to do something like this. But the problem is that now I can't. I don't know, maybe your father has this one, but let's assume that your father has a Lamborghini, okay? Beautiful car that only he drives. And he has a Ford Festiva, one of those $2,000 buckets that he can drive, okay? <laughs> okay, so. Nobody's allowed to touch the Lamborghini, right? That's private. That's your father's. But the family can use the Ford Festiva. The switches, the, 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 the key is hung from the thing, kitchen thingy, and you can pick it up and get the car and go out. Of course, your neighbor can't do that, right? So the level of access when it comes through the family, it should be something between private and public. Something that children can use, but public cannot. That's the protected I removed at the beginning of the thing. So if I want a method to be able to be called by the children, I make it protected. It means in the hierarchy of inheritance, all the children can use them. But outsiders cannot. So now I made this private. If I come over here, you will see that the main, that is private too. I want to keep that private, but I want this one to be accessible. Therefore, I'm going to come in the, in the cat thingy, and I'm in the cat thingy. Did I just remove? No, in the animal thingy. What are we talking about? In the animal, and I'm going to make that, that one protected. So when it's protected, cat can use it. Public cannot. 
Got it? That's what protected is. Now, I know questions will come asking, you wrote public over here. Can I write over there protected? Can I write over the private? The answer is yes, but don't. Too rich for our blood. That's not even no P345, I think. To inherit protectively and inherit privately makes it very confusing. Then parents, when you're doing protected, then the public ones become protected, private one remains pu private. And then when you do it privately, and publics become protected, protect, and it goes crazy. So uh, we don't want to go through this. We just want to learn inheritance, OK? Therefore, in our class, we only have a public thingy. If you want to know how the protected inheritance and private inheritance work, go get it after the semester is over, because you're going to get confused now, OK? So that is always public. Forget about that. That's, that imagine that public means is. Remember what I said? So cat is animal, right? All right, so that's that. And now if I run the program, if I run the program, oh, sorry, uh, I have the debugging on my ass, okay. Yes. We use protected for the attributes, not for the inheritance. Okay. So protected in the act, you can make you can make the attributes and the methods protected, but don't make the inheritance protected. Yes. How can you override it? <laughs> it has to have the same thing. Otherwise, you say, can I? Without having a method in a child. So what do you have in a child class? No, what I'm saying is that the question, the question answers itself. So if you don't have a prototype in the child, then there is no function. Then what overrides the other one? So you mean have a, pro, a, a function with different signature override another one? No, the answer is no. Okay. You can put an emphasis for override to make sure that the compiler gives you an error. Actually, I did not mention this in the other class, and I don't think it's in your, uh, uh, in your notes. But you can put overrides in front of the name of the function where you put constant. If you want to make it constant, you can make it overwrite. So tell to the compiler, this is supposed to override the parent. Like that, if parent doesn't have that one, it gives you a, an error. Say, hey, you told me it's, oh, it's supposed to override something. Because if you make a mistake, if instead of act, you write acts, you think it's overwriting, but it's really not. It's a new function, right? Compiler won't give you an error. So to actually enforce it, you can write an override in front of it, but we are not doing that. Anyway, so when I write, run this one, when you have an animal and there is no cat, there is nothing special happening. It's an animal that is getting created and all the things happens and good for it, well, good for the animal, okay? But when you create a cat, in here I'm saying a cat, the name is Fluffy and yada, yada, yada. So first, it, it's gonna go to the constructor in the constructor, it's going to pass the thing to animal. So it starts building the animal as soon as it comes to cat. Before anything happens in the constructor of cat, it has, it's like you are building the second story of a building. You cannot build the second story without building the first one. So because you are building a cat, and cat is made up of an animal, first the animal is getting created. So the very first thing that happens is all the initializations. So it goes in here and jumps to the animal, goes to the first initialization, and initializes the attribute. Then after that, it goes to the constructor. So it goes to the constructor. Now the name is Fluffy, that is coming from the cat, and it sets the uh, Fluffy the animal. Right? But then now it goes and continues the creation 
by recalling, uh, creating the, uh, calling the constructor of the cat. And cat continues its construction. So it says creating Fluffy the animal as a cat with five lives. So as a cat in five lives is, is printed in the, in the uh, constructor of a cat, but the other one is the constructor of the animal. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? You have to walk through this at home. F10 and F11, they're real friends, okay? So you press, if, you, if you're on Apple, I don't remember Xcode's thing, but X, Xcode has it too. What is the thing? You don't know? Oh, okay. JetBeans, okay, that's a good one too. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so anyways, F10, F11 on, on, on Visual Studio, it walks you through it. So if I default a cat, now it's coming over here, I remove the other one, and it's actually calling the name. So now the cat will be defaulted first because I didn't mention how, to, uh, sorry, the animal, because I didn't mention how to create the animal. So it goes to the animal, builds the animal, and then says, oh, Overriding, what the devil is that? Oh, yeah, overriding with no name, that's fine. So it's got to do that and defaulting the animal with no name. It's going to go like that. And then the, uh, the cat is going to get created and name is going to be set and so on and so forth. Okay, this is a simple um, reference. Nothing happens here, just G will have a new name. And then... Garfield's going to cat, it's going to act play with the cat, uh, the same thing like the other one, but now the reference that is created as animal reference over there and is holding uh, the reference of Garfield, you see it forgets that it's a cat now. Remember, the closest thing to the handle, the name of the type of the handle, that's the one that is called. Although Garfield is a cat, but when I hold the reference in an animal, which I can't, you can call me Mr. Soliman, Luke, please don't, but... You can. If you do that, then I'm going to act like my father. Okay? It's going to be like that. So it's the same thing. If you, if you hold the reference of an animal, of, of a cat in an animal, it acts like an animal. It forgets that it was a cat. And if I say act, again, it's going to act, uh, uh, the, the cat acts like a cat. And if I say move, because I did not implement the move, it's going to act like an animal because I didn't say how. When I make a sound, then it's going to make a sound and then say meow. Because I said first make a sound like an animal, then do a meow, and that's what happens. And all the stuff happening over there. And at the end, everything, is di di everything dies in a reverse order. Remember that. Everything dies in reverse order, which means... Uh, it's going to, when it kills the cat, first it's going to kill the cat, then it's going to ki kill the animal part. Okay? Again, when you, are, when you are removing stuff, don't have it here. But anyways, when you, when, when you build stuff, you always start from the top and you go to the bottom. So when you create a cat, first an animal created, then the cat, when it killed, First the cat does, then the animal part goes away. Yes? Yes. Yeah, if you do that, then it won't be able to call. Yes, 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 yes. yes. It should be, that's a good point. If you do not mention how to, if you do not mention how to create the base, the parent, the parent must have a valid default constructor, otherwise uh, you're going to get a compiler. Okay, the, the, the parent must be able to get created just by itself. Yeah, and anyways, anyways, uh, everything dies in reverse order and we're done. So, that's the syntax of inheritance. That's, ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, that's, uh, that's uh, the whole syntax of inheritance. 
Well, what happens? What happens if I actually refer to a cat? This is the exact same thing by its parent stuff. So take a look at the main now. It's the exact same thing. I didn't change anything in here. It's the exact same thing. Exact same thing. I've just the main is changed in here. Now, I created cat, the cat P, that is pepper. I created an animal pointer because cat is an animal. I can create an instance of animal in a cat. Uh, uh, because cat is an animal, I can create an instance of cat in an animal. There's no problem with that. So I have an animal pointer and a new cat is created in it. No problem. Then I have an animal reference that is pointing to the cat. And then I have an animal just by itself. And I have somebody who's very confused. Are we OK? Because you're like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> so, so the first one, I have a cat with a cat and a cat and a cat. Everything's cat. Life is beautiful. There is nothing hidden over there. I create a cat, and it dies, and we are done. Are we good? The second one is a problematic one. The second one is the cat that I created, but I'm only creating it in an animal pointer. There is no reference of cat to that object. That cat is an absolutely useless thing because I created the cat in an animal pointer. And the only access to that cat that is Tom is only through animal pointer. So no matter what you do, Tom is not going to act like a cat. It's going to be an animal. Remember, the functions and methods closest to the handle will be called always. Because it's an animal, all the functionalities of the animal is called. And even worse, even when I delete that animal pointer at the end, the exact same faith happens on the destructor. So when I actually say delete animal pointer, it only kills the animal part, and the cat remains in memory. So this is, this is going to have a memory leak. <coughs> that sucks. It's not supposed to happen. We'll find out how to fix it. It's very easy, but that's how it is. <clears throat> but this is essentially what we have in the other one. If I run it, there is no surprises over here other than the memory leak that we have. Yes, good. So. <clears throat> So when I run the program, we know exactly what happens. And I'm just going to uh, bring it up and, and, and show you what happens. And then I'm going to show you the fix for it. <clears throat> so, it so, so cat is created. Uh, 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 the, uh, Pepper the animal is created as a cat with nine lives. Then Tom is created. As you see, Tom is created as a cat. We don't have an access to it. But the constructor is telling us that Tom is created. Nothing happens over here other than a reference of an animal is pointing to a cat. And Simba is created, which is an animal. And when I am dealing with an animal, everything's normal. OK? This one, the move actually is implemented, people. So the move is even, uh, 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 what shall we call it? Um, if you look at the cat, this one. Uh, overrides the move. So the move event is changed, OK? Because I wanted to, to see. So it's acting like a cat, moving like a cat, making it sound like a cat. Life is beautiful. If I use the animal reference to the exact same object, it forgets that Pepper was a cat, and everything goes animal. Are we OK with this down to this point? Yes. You can't. You can't. It's not what if we call. You can't. Because when you say animal reference dot play, it's going to say animal reference doesn't have a play. That's a syntax error. That's a compilation error, not syntax, compilation error. And if you use the animal, we have the same problem. Although we know Tom is a cat, it's got created over there. I only have access to its animal. I can't do anything about it. It's out of reach. Worse than that, when I delete it, it only removes the Tom, the animal. What about the cat? Because delete calls the destructor, correct? 
because the animal pointer is there, only the destructor of animal, the closest thing to the handle will be called. So that's my problem. The rest of them, though, so the rest of them, though, are beautiful. Everything, everything works properly. Simba is just an animal. Dies an animal. And uh, Pepper is a cat. First the cat part dies, and then the animal. Are we OK with this? All right. There is a mechanism built into C++ that can tell to C++, hey, when you are calling this method, don't think what the handle is. See if there is a newer version of it. If that's the case, call that one. I repeat. I said that everything when you are calling, when you are uh, calling to a method, the method closest to the handle will be called. Which means if I say animal act, it's going to say animal act, I'll call the act of the animal. I don't even check to see if there is anything better. If there is a mechanism that you can add to a function to send this message to the compiler, hey, this is not the important one. This is not the real one. See if there is a newer version. Call that one. So when you have an object of type animal and you call the act, if that mechanism is employed, compiler says act, animal. Is there a newer version? No, because it's an animal. So it calls the act of the animal. But when I have an animal pointer with a cat in it and I say act, compiler says act, is there a new version? Although it is an animal, it will check. Is it a newer version? Yes, it is. It calls a newer version, which means the cat's going to be at the call. That mechanism is called virtuality, which means, and it's very simple. Just take a look. In here, I'm going to go to animal right in front. What happened to my animal? So I'll go to animal right in front of the destructor. I'm going to say, virtual. It means, hey, compiler, this is not the important one. This is virtual one. See if there's a better one after. Now you remember what happened when I deleted the thing. Remove it, Tom, the animal. You see that at the top? And it says cat part is not deleted. Let's get to that one more time. I didn't change anything. I just added the virtual in here. If I do that, then what happens is this. Let me put this over here so I can see it. So if I do that, I'm just going to run to cursor over here. Run to cursor. Now, because the destructor is virtual, as soon as I call this, the cat is gone too. Because it checks, oh, this object, it says animal, delete an animal. Well, let me see if there is more. Because there is more, the latest one is called. OK? This is called virtuality. Are we OK with this? Just one little thing, and that was it. There is absolutely no other thing to put in here. What I wanted to do, I just wanted to say something important. So there is a textbook thing that you get in all textbook answer that you get in all interviews that you have to give to virtuality. They're going to ask you, you're going to go for a C, you're going to, you're going to get an interview for a job. They say, oh, you got C++, you got, you got B plus in here, you got A in here, so you're good. But can you tell me what uh, virtual is in, in C++? Your answer is, and this is textbook, virtuals guarantee that the latest version of the method is called. Of course, afterwards, you can add another phrase to kind of make it a little juicier. You can say, virtuality guarantees that the latest version of the method is called in hierarchy of inheritance. But when you say method, it means inheritance, it means object, and you don't need to mention anything. So virtuals guarantee that the latest version of the method is called. Therefore, therefore, from this moment till the day you die, you create a destructor 
it has to be virtual. We're not going to mention you that. Because virtuals don't harm anything. If you put a virtual over there, and the class is what it is, if you have an animal in an animal, if it's virtual, there's a new version? No, it doesn't matter. It ignores the virtual. But if there is a newer version, it will be called. And for destructors, that's absolutely vital. You don't know if the class you are creating today is going to be inherited to something else five years from now. And the whole code may leak and cause trouble if you don't have the destructor as virtual. Therefore, from now on, the signature of a destructor is not tilde something. It is virtual tilde something. Always, 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 for now, forever. Any program in C++, any time in your career, you write it, you do that, I guarantee, it's just going to save your bum bum for future. OK? Be careful. OK? Always set your destructors to be virtual. So to keep it as it was, I'm going to remove the virtual from here, save it and give you five minutes break so we come back and continue our discussion. We said if we make that destructor virtual, it's going to call the latest version. We can do that to any function, not only the, the destructor, which means if I look at this one now, If I look at the animal over here now, this is my animal. I'm saying animal is such and such, and then virtual void act. It makes sure that the latest version of act is being called. Void move, which means move is not upgradable. If you are looking at a, a, a um, cat, a dog, a baji, a, a fish, like an animal, it will forget that it was a cat or a dog or a baji or a, or, a, or a fish. It will be an animal when it moves. So move is not upgradable. But virtual void sound is upgradable, which means the latest version of them will be called. Now, because of what I have written over here, My main can look like something like this, which is essentially, when I run it, you will see that all the acts and all the methods that are, all the methods, so here's uh, the, the cat. Uh, uh, the debugging is false because I don't want extra messages to be printed. Now I have. Uh, pepper created, I have fluffy created that is uh, in a cat pointer. So again, line number 20 and 21, we don't care if it's virtual or not. Line number 20 or 21, we don't care about virtuality. Compiler doesn't care about virtuality. Why? Because I have an object and I have its handle pointing to it or refer to it. I have a cat held by a cat. Who cares if it's virtual or not? Everything is a cat. Virtuality only comes in play when I have an animal pointing to a cat, or I have an animal referring to a cat. In better words, again, another interview question. When do virtuals become active? When a derived class is pointed to or referred to by a basis, pointer, or reference. So if in, in English, just to remind yourself, when do I need to look for virtuality, you always do have to say when an object is called by its family name. OK? When you, refer, when you call them with their first name, they know what they are. You don't need to worry about it. When you call them by their family name, when you refer or point to them using their base uh, classes, of any hierarchy, OK? So hierarchy could be in many levels. You can have a, an animal 
a pet, uh, and a dog. Now we have three. So pet is an animal, and dog is a pet. If you make something virtual in the animal, everything becomes virtual automatically. You don't need to mention virtual in the children anymore. So if you make the first destructor virtual, the destructor of pet will be virtual, say it or not, automatically. That's how it is. Of course, you write it just to remember that it is. Okay? So you mention it virtual if, if when you are doing it, just as a comment, as something that cl clarifies the, the, the intentions of the code. But if you don't, it, compiler doesn't care. So now at this moment, if I have an animal, looking at an animal, I don't care. No virtual. Everything. I have an animal and an animal. Virtuality, off the picture. You don't even look at what is virtual. It has nothing to do with you. When you refer to an object with its own name, you do not care if there's a virtual or not because they are not active. They cannot be an act active thing. Same thing over here. I have a cat pointing at the cat. Everything is a cat. There's no question about it. I have a cat pointed by a cat. Everything is a cat. I don't need to care about anything. This is the place I have to check what is going on. Now I have in here an animal uh, reference. Animal reference act checks to see if animal is virtual. If it is virtual, the latest version will be called. So act is virtual, move is not, remember. So act is the latest version, move is not. Sound is the latest version because sound is virtual. So remember, and here too, animal pointer. So there is no reference of cat to this object, which means the move is not accessible at all. You cannot call the move of you cannot, let me just go for the first one. So act is perfect, it runs. So there you go. You cannot call the move of Tom the cat. You can't do that. Tom is doomed to act always like an animal. Why? Because there is a reference of cat to it. And because we are not in OP345, we don't know how to opcast yet. Okay, we'll learn later. But anyways, so, but so it's going to act like an animal. and. Sounds like, an, uh, oh, sound like an animal? Why is it sounding like an animal? Oh, it does a meow. Sorry, it has a meow at the beginning. Anyways, and when I delete C, I don't need to care if the destructor is virtual because C is a cat pointer pointing to a cat. Life is beautiful. Animal pointer is pointing to a cat. That's where I actually have to see if the destructor is at the, uh, uh, virtual. And you see that it comes to the cat. And then it goes to the animal. And when I tickle them, <laughs> yeah, tickle is with an animal reference. So when you tickle the thing because the, the sound is virtual for all of them, they're going to all act properly. Like a uh, uh, rat is an animal is going to be uh, the rat that is tickled. And he is a cat. And it's going to uh, uh, get tickled like a, like a cat. And that's. That's virtuality, ladies and gentlemen. So um, that's the whole point, the thing of it. There's nothing more to talk about. Okay? Just remember, when you have virtuals, always the latest versions are called. Are we okay with this? There is no difference. What do you mean? No, 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 no. Ref because references can 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 uh, reference of reference of base can hold uh, reference of a derived class because of that virtuality comes to play exactly like the animal reference that I put over here. So when you look at it in here, I have an animal reference pointing to uh, holding the name of a cat. So when you call that one, then it checks to see if things are virtual or not. Again, virtuality only comes to play when a base reference or pointer is referring or pointing to a derive. That's the only activation for it. Other than that, virtuals don't come to play at all. OK? Now, 
I'm going to ask you a question. And the question is, what is your mother tongue? Punjabi. Yours? Don't tell me Punjabi. <laughs> what is your mother tongue? What is, what is your um, uh, mother language? Spanish. There you go. Punjabi, Spanish, Persian, Filipino. Filipinos, that's what that was. So, so you see that? Now, we are all instances of human beings, correct? So if they say, human, talk, Punjabi is going to come out. Human, talk, Punjabi is going to come out. Human, talk, Spanish is going to come out. Human, talk, Farsi is going to come out. Human, talk, Filipino is going to come out, right? Why? Because talking is virtual. Do we understand this? Okay, now, two. We all agree that humans can talk, right? Can you actually implement the action just now as a programmer think? When you want to write actually code talking, what do you write for a human? The human class. It's not inherited to a Punjabi. It's not inherited to a Persian. It's not inherited to a Spanish. I don't, Spain? Oh, there we go. Spain. It's not, and so it's not inherited in any of those. Can you actually implement the talk? No, because you don't know what the language is. It's not definite yet, right? So what do we do? We say humans can't talk? That's wrong. Humans can talk, but we cannot implement it. You follow what I'm saying? If you want to, like, this is something that you have to understand. Sometimes when you are, when you are writing the code for a base class, you know that this base class can perform certain action. It's 100% sure. If I want to say, uh, do all mammals walk? No, one of them swims. Yeah, some dolphins. <laughs> and <laughs> so they can move, right? I know mammals can move, OK? But if I actually want to say it, I cannot say definitely how, right? One of them is a horse that goes on four legs. We walk, and I don't know, one of them swims, right? So our movements are different, but all mammals can move. If that's or airplanes, uh, airplanes fly, yeah. Airplanes fly. Do all airplanes fly the same way? No, the, uh, the, the type of propulsion is different, but they all fly the same way. Damn it. Flying objects, OK? A flying object can fly, right? But the flying object can be a pigeon, or can be a helicopter, or can be an airplane, or can, you see, different types. So I know it can fly, but I cannot implement it yet, correct? These are virtual function, but a special one. A virtual function that you cannot implement, but you know they exist. These type of virtual functions, we call them pure virtual functions. And those pure virtual functions, they cause something interesting in the class. They make the class completely imaginary. If I ask you, let's say you are the greatest, what they call sculptor in the world, like you're Michelangelo. If I ask you to create a sculpture of a human being, can you? No, you need to know if it's a male or a female. The body shape is completely different, correct? But they're both humans. You follow what I'm saying? So human is not an object that I can instantiate. It's impossible. I have to inherit that human down to the detail, to the class, that I can actually make it something. So you look at it, it's going to say, OK, this is a human a female. You follow what I'm saying? It's the exact same thing. So for these things, we have what we call pure virtual functions. To implement that thing, we have what we call pure virtual functions. So this pure virtual functions of mine now can make our animal look like this. So I have an animal. The animal can act. The animal can move. Take a look at the sound. 
I know an animal can make a sound, but I don't know how. So I do not put any body implementation for the function sound. I just make it virtual and put equal to zero in front of it, which means anybody inheriting from an animal has to implement the sound. Otherwise, their classes are imaginary too. The, now I cannot instantiate animal. If I try to instantiate animal, the compiler is going to tell me you are trying to instantiate an abstract base class. You know what abstract art is, right? You know, yeah. It's something that doesn't exist. It's the view of the person, you know. The triangle, remember I told you in class what a triangle with two dots is a lady dancing? <laughs> so, so that's what I'm saying. So, so that's, that's the thing. So in here now, the sound is, so if I actually come to my main, you will see that if I actually try to create an animal, it's going to tell me, hey, what are you doing? Object of abstract class animal is not allowed. Animal is not a complete class. It needs things to be done. So animal becomes an abstract base class. So if I told you what is an abstract base class, an abstract base class is a class that at least has one pure virtual function. It can have many, but at least one pure virtual function. That only becomes an idea. When you want to implement your ideas and let other people develop upon it, that's when you put pure virtual functions in your classes. You're going to say, I want to have this thing that you can sit in it and drive. You have no idea what is the action of driving. But you call, you put a drive method in there, and then people make vehicle out of it and give meaning to the action of driving. So you can build your design. And all the things you want your class to do as pure virtual functions, then give it to another person and say, develop this. They look at your class, oh, OK, animal make a sound, so I have to make a sound. For a cat, I'm going to say meow. For a dog, I'm going to say woof. Then I can create an array of animals. None of them are animal. They have to be cat or dogs. I cannot just create an animal. I have to finalize it to something that is what they call tangible, it is, it is, you can touch it. It's not just an idea. And that's abstract based classes. And by the way, I think we are done by the, the end of week eight or nine or something. When you look at it, that's the thing. Remember I told you in this class we're going to cover two weeks? That's what it was. And that's it. And this has lots of consequences and good stuff coming out that we are going to talk about. Please walk through this. The next day we are coming in, I'm going to start with abstract-based classes. Review it and then continue.